What's the matter, dearie? Can't you sleep? No, Mum. You're still upset about your little fight with Gemma, eh? She started it. She hit me for no reason. All I did was draw eyebrows on Sandy. <laughs> Oi, don't laugh. Look at this great big lunch she's given me. I see it. And I saw the one on her head, too. You gave her that, didn't you? Yeah. Now you listen to me, my lad. There'll be plenty of times in your life when people upset you and you feel like lashing out. But no matter how much it hurts, and no matter how much you want to hurt them back, you don't go looking for revenge. You do what's right. I, I want to be friends with Jabba again, Mum. What should I do? Well, you talk to her, of course, you big silly. Ask her what she was feeling and why she did what she did. Try to see things from her point of view. Once you've done that, the rest is easy. You just smile and hold out your hand. That's my boy. Now, time for bed. Night, night, Mum. Night, night, son. Don't you worry about a thing now. It'll all be all right in the morning. Have you found him yet? Not yet, Master. Our forces have scoured the four corners of the world, but the Luminary is nowhere to be found. He is dead then. Good. If that is the case, then this world is mine. Greetings folks, and welcome to Act 2 of Dragon Quest XI. Now that we've gone through the opening cutscenes, I shall commence commentary once more. And, oh boy, what a turn of events that just happened over the last episode, wasn't it? So, the world tree of Yggdrasil, which is not only a staple of the lore in Dragon Quest XI, but in Dragon Quest as a whole, it has now been destroyed. And, I've got to be honest, I wasn't expecting that uh, when that happened. And the Lord of Shadows is back and is now ruling once again, supreme over the world in all darkness, etc, etc. I guess the one advantage we've got, if you can even call it that, considering the state of affairs that we find ourselves in, is that uh, Fuzz is alive, presumably, seeing as how the game hasn't ended. <laughs> but the Lord of Shadows doesn't actually know about him. He thinks he's dead. So, that said, we have actually lost the power of the Luminary since it was taken from us. So, we're not exactly in an ideal situation. Uh, but at least we've got, you know, the fact that we're alive. That's something at least. So, let's go ahead here as we find ourselves back in Nautica. And see what happens here. And as you can see, we're actually swimming around now uh, as a fish. Which is 
Very interesting, actually. And we can actually grab a couple of items uh, as well. So we're going to start by heading over. Uh, let me just try and get the controls right here. I'll be right back with you guys. The controls themselves then seem fairly simple. R2 floats upwards, it even says on the screen. And then circle to head back down. Or you can just actually leave the controller completely. And uh, you'll eventually float back down anyway. One thing I despise, those of you that watch my channel for any length of time probably know this. <laughs> it's water uh, levels in pretty much any game that there is. I cannot stand water levels. Mainly because of how the control systems never seem to just feel as, as comfortable as they do in the rest of whatever game it is that you're playing. Whether that be Sonic, Mario uh, or 3D areas such as this one. I'm just never a big fan of them. So, Merman here. You're alert! You're alive! <laughs> Your breath was getting shorter, you couldn't breathe the water, but look at you now! It's an unequivocal miracle! Queen Marina! <laughs> Yeah, so if you haven't guessed them already, uh, this is the hero, of course. Although, not in his usual uh, state, it's got to be said. So, the merman's gone running off to the queen. We're going to follow him eventually. Uh, but not initially. We're going to go ahead and grab a couple of items first. And we're going to start that by heading over to the western side. Let's just float upwards a little bit. And there should be a chest, first of all, we can grab. Over here, I believe, somewhere. Right, let me try and find that, guys. Won't be a sec. Okay, that chest is just at the bottom of the boat, okay, near that location you just saw me at. So just approach it, and you can open the chest as normal, even as a fish here. And you'll see there's a kind of jet stream. That would actually take us to the upper level, and we'll be grabbing that in just a moment. But before we do, if we just head around a little bit more to the north, we can enter this cave area. And um, we can see a treasure chest. Nothing in that, unfortunately, for us. Uh, but if we just pop down to the side of it, there's a sparkly spot just hiding there in the kelp uh, to the side. So make sure you grab that. And then we're going to head back to that jet of water uh, that we just saw. And as I say, that will take us then up to the next level. Where we can continue our journey in fish form here. So let's just have a look at the map. So we have actually, of course, visited this area previously uh, but there's you know stuff we can access now that we couldn't before since we can swim all over the place okay guys so the exploration continues and what we're going to do is start by swimming up and just turning around literally behind us uh, where there's quite a high platform up here as you can see and if we just go onto the map we can see where all the sparkly points are as per usual and if we just head over here we can see there's one that's located a little bit down. Oh, there it is. Look, I can see it. So that'll be the first one we grab in this area. That one is Platinum Ore. Uh, next up, we're going to go... Uh, well, let's start by going north, shall we? And if we just head down south... Oh, uh, sorry, down towards the floor a little bit. Uh, there's actually a chest. If you go through the holes in the roof there, you can see that quite easily. We'll go ahead and nab it. This one contains an effing, sorry, not an effing, <laughs> an elfin elixir. So we'll put that in the bag. Uh, next, we're going to go over to the other side. Try and get out of the way of that merman there. And if we just bring up the map again, we can see the sparkly point is right towards the southeast of this area. I think it's quite high, actually. So let's just swim uh, up if we can. Float upwards. We have to kind of spam that button in order to actually get any decent movement going. You can't just hold it down or you'll sink back. And somewhere up here. Yep, there it is. Sparkly points. That's tucked quite out of the way, actually, isn't it? But fortunately, the map does tell us where they are. So platinum ore, not really all that useful anymore. Uh, but hey, for the sake of completionism, we're going to go ahead and get it. Right. We're going to drop down in a moment. There's actually a hidden chest, which can be a little bit annoying trying to find it. So, just make sure that uh, we don't miss it. Just keep heading north, staying to the east if you can help it. And I can't see it right yet. Oh, there it is, look. It's a little bit further down the bottom on this blue platform here. Blue coral. Purple, blue, something along those lines. 
Uh, Zombies Bane. Okay, sounds interesting. Okay, and we're going to continue swimming north. Uh, we can see the weapon shop actually on the map. That's going to be our next location. And there should again be another sparkly point, I believe. Maybe just down here, perhaps. Right, this sparkly point should be a red eye. Uh, let me just bring it up on the map. Maybe we'll see it a bit easier then. Might be underneath us, actually. Okay. So it is very close to this location. But I guess it's actually just on the... Lower level, perhaps? Unless it's in here. Oh, I can see something, I think. Get in there! Can't seem to get in this one. There we go. Wow, that is tricky. There's something there, though. Yeah, Redder, that was not the usual sparky, was it? It was like, maybe it was just kind of camouflaged into the floor, but it didn't look like one of the blue sparklies to me. Interesting. Okay, so next up we're going to go over to the item shop area. So, another sparkly spot over that point. In fact, it might actually be this roof here, from what the map was telling me then. Yeah, there it is. That one's better. More visible for a blue eye. And there's another hidden treasure chest as well. There it is. So just past the next building, really. This one containing a mini medal, so probably the one treasure you do want to get for sure. I'm starting to remember why it is I hate these type of water levels in video games. I just want to be able to control my characters as normal, please. Right, we're going to head over to the palace here. And... Yeah, we can see a sparkly just up here. This one's quite a high one, I think. Or maybe not very high. Should we see if it's down here? Uh, nope, doesn't appear to be, does it? Okay, so let's head up. Start spamming that button again. Dum -dum -dum. I don't know where else it could be. Oh, right, unless it's above here, perhaps. No, we can't get through there, can we? How strange. Oh, we can get past it. There it is. Wow. Some of these are really out of the way, aren't they? For stuff that isn't ultimately that exciting. But hey, it's a purple eye. And can... Uh, okay, there's one more uh, sparkly spot. And that's over to the east. So all the other sparkly spots that I'm not getting, incidentally, are sparkly spots that aren't new. Okay, we've collected them before. So by all means, you know, go and pick them up if you want to again, since they've respawned. Uh, but for the sake of the video walkthrough, I'm only going over the new ones right now. And it looks like we need to get up high again for this one. I'm assuming, anyway. Uh, maybe we don't have to. Can we even go any higher? Uh, could be a low one, this. Let's power it down to the bottom, shall we? Let me just check on the map. Yeah, it's got to be a high one, unfortunately. Now I've come all the way down. Okay, so it was about this height. I'll just show you the floors down there. And this is where the sparkly spot is. Okay, just where the map told us. Uh, this one will give us an enchanted stone. And as I say, guys, that's pretty much uh, all of the sparkly stuff. I mean, there's one over there. For the sake of it, we may as well get it, even though it's a respawn of a previous one that we've collected before. It's hardly out of the way, though, is it? Some crimson coral. And we're going to head next uh, into the palace, actually. So this is where the uh, merman went that ran off earlier on. And to chat to the queen, we just need to go ahead and speak to the mermaid here. And she'll give us the option to do that. Take us to the throne room. And then just head forward for the cutscene. You say our guest has finally recovered from his wounds? 
Then let us expedite the plan. It must be done, and soon. shall not be diminished. <laughs> ah, there you are, old friend. <laughs> or should I say, new fish. You make a finer flounder than I'd ever dared to wish. When first my subjects brought you here, it gave me such a shock. To see you bruised and broken like a ship wrecked on the rocks. The Lord of Shadows thinks you dead. The sea swarms with his spies. I changed you to this fishy form to hide you from his eyes. Many troubled months have come and gone since your arrival. As you slept, my healers strove to safeguard your survival. You cannot know how glad I am to see you fully healed. But soon the spell will fade. And you must once more take the field. I have a plan to see you safe. That's all I've ever wished. If all goes well, you'll soon know what it feels like to be fished. Forgive my haste. These strange events must take you by surprise. You have so many questions. I can see it in your eyes. I saw you battle bravely by the World Tree's holy heart. I saw the Lord of Shadows tear your fellowship apart. I saw you strive to fell the fiend, and how your plans were vexed. When you're ready, follow me to see what happened next. Right, so we can basically enter into the secret area behind the throne room now. And we'll just approach the door once more for the next set of cutscenes or what have you. Oh, well, we do need to just swim a little bit further first. Uh, through the Queen's private chambers, in fact. So we can see the map. There's nothing here to collect. Okay, so it is just a story area more than anything else. And we're going to have to behold in a moment a pretty nasty sight. So we'll get updated on exactly what's been happening since, since we've been uh, fished cave. up. It is the private parlour of the Queen beneath the waves. Behold the pearl of wisdom, jewel of we the ocean's daughters. It lets its bearer view the world through any drop of water. I've summoned up a thunderstorm to saturate the ground. Now, let's ascend into the rain and take a look around. Whenever you are ready, touch your fin against the pearl, and you shall see what's come to pass there in your airy world. Exactly, so by approaching the quest here, we will get to see exactly what state uh, Drea has found itself in the, po uh, the following, or the previous rather, few months since we've been out of action. So let's go ahead and do so now. The once fair land of Airdria is now a ravaged shell. When Mordigan destroyed its heart, the holy world tree fell. Upon its fall, the world was with a searing storm despoiled. 
trees and grasses burned to ashes, lakes and rivers boiled. Burning boulders fell to earth and pulverized the land. Mountains cracked and realms were racked at his unholy hand. In one fell swoop, the Lord of Shadows ended countless lives. The lucky few who rode the storm out struggled to survive. Their days are filled with desperation, misery and tears. I see them quake and tremble, but I cannot calm their fears. are gone. Our families and friends, too. All we have left is our lives. We can't just sit down and die. We have to keep walking. We have to keep following the hero. They say he's built a fortress south of Heliodor. If we can make our way there, we'll be safe. <gasps> Don't give up, okay? This hero guy won't let us down. Once we get to the last bastion, everything will be fine. You'll see. A few more short steps lead from darkness into dawn. Safe haven awaits. Mm. Mm -hmm. Amid the black depths of despair, a spark of light still shines. A man who gives the people hope in these benighted times. Yet that light too shall soon succumb to evil's ceaseless claim. Only you can take that spark and kindle it to flame. Yggdrasil has crashed to earth. Her light has disappeared. In her place, the Lord of Shadows, Citadel of Fear. He took the sacred world tree's power and now makes it his own. Foul Mordigan commands the world from his unholy throne. His forces seek to steal the souls of every last survivor. His flying servants sweep the skies. The seas swarm with his divers. <laughs> Alizarin, the fiend that seeks to devastate my nation. Another one of Mordigan's detestable creations. I cast a spell to hold him back, but needed to be stronger. The barrier's at breaking point and cannot last much longer. 
I'd hoped that I could save my realm. It was a foolish notion. Compared to his, my strength is but a raindrop in the ocean. Ere long, the barrier will fall, and Nautica will too. Marauding beasts may take my life, but they shall not take you. Okay then. Oh, sorry about that. I just realised I forgot to mute the mic, so you might have heard me drinking my coffee then throughout that cutscene. <laughs> Our time grows short. I fear my kingdom's race is nearly run. My place is with my subjects now. We face our fate as one. So yeah, looks like the world is not in the greatest of conditions right now. And the Lord of Shadows has uh, basically decided to rule with an iron fist. And some of his, uh, and some of his creatures are, you know, causing havoc and whatnot. Including one that's close by. So I wonder who's going to be dealing with that. Anyway, once you've gone ahead and made your way through the cutscenes there, we're going to go ahead and leave the chamber here. And actually leave the palace as a whole once we regain control here. Now, once you've left the palace, uh, we're just going to swim straight down. And then another cutscene will commence. We can't do anything else, actually, apart from trigger this cutscene. How curious you are, my friend. I showed you fearful sights, and yet those wide and watery eyes still gleam with limpid light. It seems that grief and tragedy have followed you since birth. Cruel fate's dark plan has stalked you to the corners of the earth. And yet you've weathered every blow, prevailed against all strife. You've brushed with death a thousand times, yet still you have your life. It is the will of Yggdrasil that you are still alive. It is your fate to save this world. For this, you must survive. Bright luminary, let the light shine on the world again. Find the fading sparks of hope and kindle them to flame. You'll find the sparks I speak of here and there throughout the land. They are the former members of your staunch and stalwart band. The fire within their hearts will light the path that you must tread. Find your friends and bring an end to this dark age of dread. the luminary lives there's hope for people still you cannot fail you must prevail it is the world trees will <gasps> Shadow's followers give fond farewell short shrift. I had so much to tell you, but it seems I must be swift. <sighs> Do not lose heart. Do not look back until your time is through. You're the luminary. We believe in you. Citizens of Nordica, give your lives to the Lord of Shadows. Well, if you thought the underwater world of Nautica was safe, 
from the clutches of uh, what's his face then think again because as you can see it isn't so once again we get control here and what we're going to do is just swim over to this line and uh, attach ourselves onto it a big juicy prawn dangling in the water hmm yeah let's take a bite shall we John's hooked himself a big un. Could it be the legendary man eating mackerel? Let's reel him in and find out. Yes, I caught something. I actually caught something. Blue John's gonna eat tonight. Maybe there is some good in this forsaken world after all. <laughs> who, who the heck are you? I, and what were you doing on the end of my hook? I don't care how hungry you are, you don't go pinching the bait off another man's line. <laughs> hey, now. Don't cry, Sonny. <laughs> Look, I don't know what's got you sniffling, but it must be something serious. So listen, Blue John's going to help you out. We fisher folk who gotta look after each other, ain't we? You can stay the night in my hut. There's none too many safe places left in this rotten world. But it'll do you for a day or two. When you're ready, you can head over to the last bastion. They'll see you right. The fella running the place is a bony Fido hero. Right, now that's decided. Let's head for shore. Hold on tight, lad. Things are about to get choppy. Right, so we're back in the main part of the world here, as you can see. And once again, we have control of the hero. So go ahead and break the pot for a whopping 13 gold coins. Now, a couple of interesting things to note. First of all, if we go to the zoom spell... We've actually got nowhere to zoom to. That's because the world has gone through such a change now. We actually need to find a whole set of brand new zoom locations. We can no longer just whiz all over the world, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a little bit annoying, uh, but that's the way it's going to be. So we're going to go ahead here and leave the hut. As we're finding ourselves back on the Emerald Coast, as you can see. So let's just go ahead and make our way to the main uh, part of the beach here. For what seems to be another cutscene. Ah, hi there, Sonny. So you finally roused yourself from your slumbers, eh? <laughs> Blue John and say good morning. But there ain't no morning to speak of these days. You haven't noticed. Why, we've seen nothing but dark skies since the day of the disaster. Just look at the state of it. There was an almighty booming and rumbling. And then great gouts of blackness started billowing up from the castle over in Heliodor. Since then, nothing's been right. That was the last time any of us saw the sun. That ain't good. We better hide, and fast. Them monsters started pouring out of Heliodor Castle about the same time as the blackness. The rotters seem to think they own the place. They've never come so near before, though. 
They'll be looking for food, I'll warrant. And there Blue John was, thinking he'd found himself a safe spot. Listen, uh, seems the victuals round these parts are set to get mighty scarce. I hate to send you packing, Sonny, but I reckon you'd best be on your way. You'll be safer over at the last bastion, anyhow. Go on and get yourself over there before the monsters spot you. That hero feller will look after you, I'm sure. He's a good one, that one. A spark of hope in these dark old times. Steer a course due west until you hit Cobblestone Falls. The last bastion lies just beyond. Okay, so fortunately there is a campsite nearby as you can see, so we'll be adding our next uh, destination to our zoom list and we'll be staying there as well of course. Now one thing to note is that the monsters, you might think, oh it's okay, we're back in the Emerald Coast, at least the monsters here are going to be easy by this point. Not so, all the monsters now across the world have been replaced by vicious versions of them. So, okay, it's still the same enemies, but they're now vicious versions, which basically means for all intents and purposes, apart from the fact they look a little bit different, have glowy eyes, that they award more experience, do more damage, and have more health. Now, you might be thinking, oh no, but what about the fact that I didn't complete the monster bestries previously for the previous uh, monsters that were in the area? Well, the good news about that, if we just go, I don't know, for any of these, uh, the Emerald Coast, is you can see that there's a whole new set of monsters to add to each of those areas, but when you defeat a vicious version of the monster, it will also add the normal version to your defeated monster list if it's not already on the list. Okay, guys, so you cannot miss out on uh, completing the best tree if you want to work for it even after the end of Act 1. So there is a vendor that you might want to go ahead and check out. He's got some pretty decent wares, actually. Uh, make sure as well you check out your equipment. Uh, the Zombies Bane that we looted a little bit earlier on is still nowhere near as good as the Platinum Power Sword that we've been rocking since the Casino all oh, long, long time ago now. So yeah, check out the new enemies if you want to, but since this enemy's getting on, uh, sorry, since this episode's getting on, then I'm just going to make my way straight over to the campsite so we can finish off. One thing to note as well is that you can get Vicious Metal Slimes in this area, which are rare, but if you can find them, give a ton of experience. So you might want to try and farm for those, but I'm not going to bother. But you might want to. Uh, if you do find one, then it can really be worth it. But anyway, folks, that's it for me for today. So thanks for stopping by and joining me for today's episode. Hope it's been helpful to you. And come back soon for more Dragon Quest XI. Have a great day, guys. Goodbye.